In this video, we're going to talk about venous return. So as you know, when we exercise, heart rate and stroke volume go up. And therefore, cardiac output goes up. Increase heart rate, increase stroke volume, increase cardiac output. And this means that there is a greater amount of blood coming out of the left ventricle per minute. Okay. And if more blood is coming out of the left ventricle, then we also need to return more blood to the heart, okay? Because we need blood coming out of the heart at the same rate that it's going into the heart. Otherwise, the, the heart would empty with blood. So as cardiac output goes up, venous return goes up. They need to be matched. Venous return has some difficulties to overcome. Okay, so this is the blood flow back to the heart. There's two things that make venous return difficult. One is that the venous system is very low in pressure, and two is gravity. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So we've got the heart. You've got blood coming out of the left ventricle. And that blood goes through your arteries, through your capillaries and cells, and comes back to the heart through the veins. This blood flow from the cells to the right atrium has a difficulty forming a pressure gradient because the pressure in your veins is low. Okay. And remember, we need a pressure gradient. We need the pressure down here to be greater than the pressure here in order for blood to move back to the heart. And the pressure in the veins, the whole venous system is relatively low. And so there is not much of a pressure gradient driving blood flow back to the heart. The other problem we have is that if you're standing upright, you also have to fight gravity, okay? Because if these are your legs, gravity is forming a pressure that actually wants to pull the blood backwards, okay? But we know that in the venous system, blood won't flow backwards because the venous system has one-way valves. Okay, so as long as the blood has gone forward, it's not going to go back. Okay, But we still have the challenge of creating a gradient great enough to drive blood forward in the first place. So venous return needs some assistance. And there are three venous return assistance mechanisms that we're going to talk about. One is venoconstriction. So when the SNS system fires, as it does all the time, even at rest and more so during exercise, we get um, signals sent to smooth muscle. We've already talked about that. It goes to arterial smooth muscle. It also goes to venous smooth muscle. And when the venous smooth muscle receives the SNS signals, it's going to cause vasoconstriction. Okay, so the veins are going to get smaller, okay, which reduces radius. Remember that peripheral resistance is length times viscosity over radius to the fourth. And if radius is decreasing, as it is during vasoconstriction, the peripheral resistance is increasing. So what this does is it causes an increase in venous pressure, okay, and this pr creates the gradient that drives blood towards the right atrium. So when we get an increase in venous pressure, the venous pressure 
is going to be greater than the right atrial pressure. Okay, and that will drive blood. Let's see, we've got cells, arteries, veins. Okay, so when venous pressure increases, that's P1, that creates the gradient between P1 and P2. P2 is the pressure in the right atria. So we get increased pressure gradient and increased driving force to get blood back to the heart. So venal constriction is important at rest, but even more so during exercise because we need to increase venous return during exercise to match the increase in cardiac output. So during exercise, we get even more venal constriction of the venous smooth muscle in order to help create a gradient to drive blood back to the heart. The second assistance mechanism is called skeletal muscle pump, which we'll talk about on the next slide. And then the third one is called the respiratory pump, and we're going to talk about that in the respiratory chapter. So just keep in mind right now that there is uh, a third venous return assistance mechanism, but we're not going to talk about that yet. So let's talk about the skeletal muscle pump. So basically what the skeletal muscle pump is, is it's mechanical compression of the veins by the muscles, primarily in your legs. Okay. So when your leg muscles contract, they shorten. When they shorten, they bulge in the center, and they place mechanical compression on all of the veins uh, in the area. And this is going to reduce the radius okay, through mechanical compression. Okay? So with vasoconstriction, we reduce the radius because of contraction of the smooth muscle. Here we're reducing the radius because of mechanical compression coming from outside of the veins. And that decrease in radius causes an increase in peripheral resistance again. Okay, if this decreases, this increases. And if we get an increase in peripheral resistance, we get an increase in P1, a bigger pressure gradient, it's going to drive blood towards the right atrium, where the pressure is essentially zero. And here's a picture. You can see what the one-way valves look like. So as soon as the blood gets through that valve, it cannot flow backwards. So that is the muscle pump. Now, an important application of the muscle pump is when we talk about cool down. So in order to keep the muscle pump going, your leg muscles need to be contracting. So during exercise, we've got that increase in cardiac output, and it needs to be met with an increase in venous return. And one of the things helping venous return is the contraction of your leg muscles. So if you're exercising and you stop, okay, your cardiac output is still elevated. Okay, your, your cardiac output doesn't go back down to resting levels immediately. So when you stop, your cardiac output is still elevated. So we still need venous return to be elevate, elevated to match that. But if you stop exercising, you stop contracting your leg muscles. Okay, so you immediately lose the muscle pump, which is one of the venous return assistance mechanisms okay and therefore venous return will drop okay and if cardiac output is greater than venous return we are going to get some blood pooling in lower extremities 
which means we're going to have less blood flow to the brain, okay, which means less oxygen to the brain. And this could cause dizziness. So if you stop abruptly, stop abruptly, cardiac output remains high, but venous return drops. Therefore, cardiac output is going to be greater than venous return. We're going to get blood pooling in the lower extremities, less blood flow back to the brain, less oxygen back to the brain. You get dizzy, all because you stopped contracting your muscles. Okay, so you need to keep that muscle pump going. So one of the reasons at the end of an exercise um, session, it's important to keep moving, keep letting your legs contract, because if you don't, you may get some reduction in blood flow to the brain, you may get dizzy, which dizziness by itself is not a bad thing, but what can happen is when somebody's dizzy is that they may actually fall. And when people fall, they hit their head, they break their hips, they get hurt. So you don't want people to fall. So it's really important to tell people to keep moving their legs after exercise so that venous return can remain elevated as long as cardiac output is elevated. And over time, as heart rate, stroke volume go down, cardiac output goes down, it's okay eventually to stop because the venous return doesn't need to remain at that high level. If something like this happens, so you're teaching in an exercise class and somebody tells you that they're dizzy, okay. you might think, well, we need to start up the muscle pump again. We, we might need them to start walking and get that venous return increased. The problem is at this point it's too late. At this point, you just need to do something quickly to prevent them from falling because if they're dizzy and you tell them to walk, they may fall. So what you should do is tell them to lay down, okay, because you need to eliminate gravity. So when you lay down, that's going to help venous return, and you want them to elevate their legs, okay to let you use gravity to increase the venous return. And usually in a situation like this, within a matter of minutes, the dizziness goes away because as soon as the venous return increases, you return the blood flow to the brain, you return the oxygen to the brain, the dizziness goes away. Okay, So you want to tell them to lay down, elevate their feet.